Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. In this video, we're gonna talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs and the brand new 0.4.3 update. I'm gonna go over all the changes and fixes in this release, along with walking you through an entire demo on how to update the application, run a software update and install OpenCore to your hard drive, then the post install root patch, and even change some of the settings that fixes some of the graphics glitches that you might've been experiencing. So we got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. A note from Macola here, and I went over this in detail in my Mac OS 12.3 update video, Makola is taking some time away from the patcher because his family is in Ukraine and he's trying to deal with that first. And as we know, family is always first. The bottom line is the patcher is in a stable condition right now, but hopefully it will not need any major updates until WWDC when Mac OS 13 is released. And he put a note down here that if you feel like you would like to help, you can donate to the UN Ukraine Humanitarian Fund. I've already made a donation. If you feel like you can and your situation is good where you can do that, that'll be a wonderful donation. Now let's talk about some of the changes in the 0.4.3 update. First of all, a lot of the fixes revolve around non-metal patches. So for example, if you have a around 2011 Mac that does not have a metal compatible graphics card, then you will have to install the post root patch volumes. But even for Mac OS Monterey, drop some of those drivers too. So even all the way up to like 2013 or even 14, you still have to install the root patches. So for those systems, the graphics acceleration patches are working very well for the system, except there's some small glitches. For example, with this particular system that doesn't have any of the, the updates on it yet, you can click on the control center, you can see the volume sliders are all messed up. And when you click on the menu bar here, you can see some of the squares that come up in the dropdown here. That was actually fixed in the previous release and the control center sliders are fixed in this release. So if we go to a fix machine here on 12.3, running 0.4.3, we can click on the control sliders here and look at that, beautiful. Really nice control center, all fixed up. And when we go here, we got that beta blur here. No more boxes around the drop down menus. Really nice. So the next thing is, is that there was some missing icons in certain areas, though that's fixed. Also, the, there was a change for hardware cursor, and that means that there were some glitches with the cursor on the acceleration patches, and that's been fixed. But you might notice that if your system beach balls, it will be a static beach ball. So if you see that, don't worry about it. At least you don't have any glitches. Another thing is quick look. So if we go back to the other system here and we can click on quick look, you can see that there's some weird coloring here. But if we go to a system that's fixed here, we can see that that is no longer the case here. Look at that. Really nice. Also the keyboard backlight. This is one of the biggest changes because remember if you watch my original Mac OS Monterey video, two of the big applications that you needed to install were Res X Extreme to fix some of the uh, color issues on the earlier Macs and you had to install the LabTick application to get a keyboard backlight. Guess what? That's all fixed now. So if we go back to our system here that's not fixed and we click the key, the um, look at that. See that? It's not working. So you would have to install LabTick tick but on the fixed system here check this out let's hit that look at that really nice fix there's also a note here that add Ethernet control detection to the build. There's also resolve a NIC card support for pre Ivy Max. And there was another issue that came up on 12.3 beta 2 that caused problems with AirPlay on Skylake Plus Max. That's been resolved. And also there was another fix that McCullough mentioned up here about the save dialogue. So for example, if you update to 12.3 and you don't update your open core legacy patches 0.4.3, if there's a save dialogue in any application that uses it, like pages or whatever, you can't click on the save button or the open button there. So that's a really, that was a really an annoying issue that was fixed by the developers. They did a great job fixing so, that. Now that we got the fixes down, let's jump over into the demo to show you how to do the update to the application, install those new settings to the hard drive to fix all those issues, and install those brand new post volume patches to your Mac to get going here. Okay, our demo system today is an early 2011-15 inch MacBook Pro running Mac OS Monterey 12.0.1. So this is an older system. This is the original release. And as you can see here in software update, it says, hey, you've got an update to Mac OS Monterey 12.3. Before you do this, you got to know a couple things right off the bat. 
And the first and most important thing to do is to back up all your files before you do a software update. I recommend doing this for even if you have a supported Mac. And again, for 99% of the people, you're going to be fine. It's going to install the update and you're fine. But you don't want to be that small percentage that maybe has an issue and then you don't have all your files back up. So make sure you use Time Machine or an external hard drive, back up those files. So if something goes wrong, no big deal. You can just reinstall and you'll be back where you left off. Now, I also recommend having that you USB that you originally used, just put it in a drawer. Just build that USB out so in case you have a problem, you can always boot to it and reinstall if you ever have a problem. So now that we have that out of the way, what do we do next? The first thing you can do is open up OpenCore Legacy Patcher and then see what version you're at. And the nice thing about it is that if you update it to 0.4.0, the GUI app now will tell you if you have an update. So you don't have to go out to the GitHub page every time and say, oh shoot, is there an update now? It'll tell you right here. So the nice thing, all you need to do is click on view on GitHub. And then you can see, hey, here's the new update. Now, when we go back to the app, we can see that we are on 0.4.1. So we're two versions behind. Now, when you go down here to these versions, you you might be a little bit confused. Like, which one what do I need here? Well, there's the GUI version. And that's the application that we see right here. And then there's the TUI application. That's what I did my original video with in the command line interface application. Now, both applications are being developed together. So if you're a fan of the TUI app, feel free to get that. But most of the development is going into the GUI app because it's fully featured now. And users will understand the interface a little bit better instead of looking at like, I'm a little bit afraid of using the terminal application. All we need to do is click on one of these to start to download. But before we do, I wanted to talk about the offline versus the regular app. Keep in mind the offline app is 500 megabytes and that's because it includes all of the post install root patches inside the app. So you do not need to download that, them anymore. Now, why is that important? That's important for older Macs that lost Wi-Fi drivers that Apple removed from Mac OS Monterey. So for example, if you have a 2011 27 inch iMac, you install this update here, you will not have Wi-Fi anymore. And if you don't, did not download the offline app, you won't be able to install the root volume patch to be able to fix your Wi-Fi or fix your graphics acceleration drivers. So when you download the offline, it doesn't have to download anything. It fixes your, your Wi-Fi, it fixes your graphics acceleration, and you're good to go. But if you click on this here, this tells you which patches you need. So if you don't see legacy Wi-Fi down here, you don't need the offline app because everything's right here. But if you click on this, like for example, if you have a Mac Pro 5 comma 1 and it says legacy Wi-Fi, you better get that offline app. So now that we know which app to get, let's download here and update the application. Okay, it's downloaded. Once you see it jump up and down, now keep in mind, I did grab the offline because if you're confused still, grab this one and you'll be always safe. So now let's go to our downloads folder here and we can see that Open Core Legacy Patcher is in here. So we'll open up our Macintosh hard drive, go to applications here. So when we drag this this over here, we're going to get a notification that it says, do you want to replace it? Yes, we do, because we want the latest version. Now we have the latest version 0.4.3. Let's double click on it to open it here. It'll verify and it'll ask us if we're sure that we want to open this downloaded version and then we'll click on yes. Okay, there we are. We now have our updated 0.4.3 app. Now remember, just because you install the latest version of this application does not mean that you actually have updated any of the files on the local hard drive in the EFI partition or any of the post install root patches. So what we can do is before we actually update here to 12.3, we can build and install those brand new settings for 0.4.3 to our hard drive before we install the update. So all we need to do is go into the settings here and then set all the settings that you want and look at, we can see that automatic detected that we're on 8.2 2011 MacBook Pro. And then I usually uncheck show the boot picker here. And that's all you need to do. Return back to the main menu here and then click on build and install open core. Click on the build open core button and you can see that it builds all those files to this temporary location. Then all you need to do is click on install open core and it's going to say, where do you want to install it? We want to install it to disk zero, which is in the internal hard drive. We'll click on that. And then the EFI partition, click on that. And then we need to type in our administrator password here. And there it goes. I've seen a couple comments. 
keep an eye on what the output here is. As long as you see open core transfer complete, then you're good to go. A lot of people don't know that maybe there's an error in here and they just click this without even reading this, just to make sure there's no errors in there. And you might have to install it again if there's a, a problem. So we'll click on return back to the main menu here and we can exit out of open core patcher and let's reboot. Okay, we're back up, let's log back in. We have all the 0.4.3 update files installed to our internal hard drive, EFI partition. So now that that's done, we're ready to update to the latest version of macOS Monterey here. So all we need to do is, and again, make sure you backed up everything. All we need to do here is click on more info so you can see information about the update, just to make sure that there's no other updates in here. If for some reason this is unchecked, all you need to do is check mark it here. Once that's selected, all we need to do is click install now. But before we do, I want want to show you a really quick trick here. A lot of you have said, I don't want to have to download 11 or 12 gigabytes worth of an update to be able to do this. Now, keep in mind, this is normal if you have to install those post volume patches for graphics acceleration. But let's say that you have a limited internet connection. I know some of you have that and you don't want to have to download all that. So let's click close. Let's open up open core legacy patcher again. And what we're going to do is we're going to uninstall all the graphics acceleration patches reboot and then we'll be able to install the delta update so let's show you how to do that we will go into post root patch here and then we want to revert the root patches click on that button and we want to relaunch the application as an administrator we'll click on yes it's going to close the app say hey we need to restart the application as an administrator here we'll do that Give it a second to close out here and it will relaunch automatically as root. And there we are. So click on post install root patch again, and then click revert root patches. And then it's going to start the process. And look at that. The reverting of the last signed APFS snapshot is complete. The unpatching is complete. Please reboot. So we'll click on return to the main menu. Okay, we're back up. And as you can see the gray background here, you can tell we're, we don't have any of the graphics accelerations here. So we will log in with our password. Now we're checking for the update here. And then let's click on more info. Check that out. 4.53 gigabytes. That's a lot better than almost 12 gigabytes. So now all we need to do is click on install now. Click on agree. There you go. Once it gets to 4.53 gigabytes, the downloaded update is finished, but then it has to go into preparing mode, which can take anywhere between 10 minutes and 30 minutes, depending on how fast your Mac is. Once that preparing phase is done, the system will reboot, install the update and come back up and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back up. Let's log in here. Now that we're back up, you can see by the menu bar here and the there's no transparency down here that this system does not have any graphics acceleration patches. The 12.3 update basically overwrites all those files and we have to reset them. So let's go back to the main menu here and then we need to install the post volume root patch here. So we'll click on that button here. And then we'll, we can see right away, look at this new option here, miscellaneous legacy keyboard backlight. So that if you see that, you know that that's being fixed. You don't have to use lab tick anymore. Like we mentioned earlier, and then we've got AMD and then Intel Sandy bridge being patched here. So let's click on start root patching and we'll say we would like to restart the application as root. We'll type in our administrator password. You know, close out the old app. We'll give it a second to close here. Okay, now that's closed. We can go back into install the post install root patch and then click start root patching. Now it's downloading all the patches. Now this is the area that I wanted to make sure of because I've seen a lot of people in the comments saying, hey, I installed the root patch, but it's not working. Keep an eye right at the end here. At the end, it's got to rebuild the kernel cache and create the snapshot that we can use to revert like we did earlier. If there's any errors, you'll see them right at the bottom here. And it'll tell you that the patches were, did not get installed uh, successfully. And that's very rare. But if that does happen, this is what you're looking for. Patching is complete. Don't just click here. Just make sure you see that patching complete and then you know that they worked. And that says, please reboot the machine for the patches to take effect. So let's click on return to main menu and we will reboot. As you can see already the transparency of the spinning circle and the dock is back. We now have graphics acceleration working 
and we are looking really good here. Now let's talk about those new settings that we talked about in the non-metal. So let's open up Open Core Legacy Patcher application again here. And then we wanna look at those settings in the settings section and then the non-metal settings. And there's a brand new item here called Dark Menu Bar that I think you're really gonna enjoy. Let's first talk about the Enable Beta Blur. Click on that here, and then what'll happen is, is that'll fix this, this squares in the menu bar item issue. But notice up here that if you're using the light uh, wallpaper here, or the background, when we go into the desktop and screensaver, and then we're using the light here that it's kind of hard to see the items up here. So if you use the light and or you have a real bright wallpaper, you can click on dark menu bar. So I'll show you what that looks like. All we need to do to take those settings into play here is close out of Open Core Legacy Patcher here and just log out and log back in. And look at that. You can see that the menu bar is a lot easier to read, especially with these icons over here, if you're using a light background. Now, the only problem is, and oh yeah, let's take a look at that. Make sure, look at that, the all those squares are gone, which is really nice. So, but the only problem is, is wonder if you're using the dark. Then it becomes harder to see again. So what we can do is we can go back into the app and then we can change that right back to go light if you have a darker background. So we can go into settings again, non-metal, and uncheck dark menu bar, close it out. And there we go. And that's a lot easier to read on a darker background. So it's a really cool item there. And that's the 0.4.3 Open Core Legacy Patcher Update video. Now, keep in mind, I know this video is long, and if you stuck with me all the way here, maybe you learned something today. And that's what I wanted to say is that when we talk about the viewers of this video, we have some people that are viewing this for the very first time, and they are learning all they can about the patcher, but we also have a bunch of advanced viewers who have done this multiple times, and maybe you only want to watch the first part that goes over some of the feature fixes, and that's totally fine. That's why I always put chapters in the video, so you can always go to the exact place you want to go to. Remember, the patcher is a complex process if you're just starting out. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed this video and created value for you. If it did, I appreciate a thumbs up or a share, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button, and I also want to thank all my viewers, and especially my Patreon members. You guys rock. I really appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.